Well, welcome back, Beans Army, to another episode of the Less Is More Sports Podcast, the college offseason podcast, where you could say we're less of the regular season, but more of the offseason. Matt is on vacation this week, but taking his place, I want to introduce you all to the newest member of the Less Is More Sports family, my man, Ryan Northcutt here. So, Ryan, welcome to the show, and tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the opportunity of being on this show. Um, I'm I'm 17 years old. Just just turned 17 recently. Uh, when I was younger, I was diagnosed with uh, leukemia, type of cancer in your blood. Um, I'm now now fully cleared of survivor, and I I love talking about sports. Well, that's one of my favorite things to do. Love watching sports. I'll say that's definitely a very inspiring story here, because one thing we do like to do here, less is more sports is a lot. There's so much negativity go, goes on in the world. Um, it, it's we're, we're such a rip and bash type of society. But I think your story could inspire this because you never know who these podcasts are going to reach. And I think someone could be watching at home and, you know, hear your story and you might you know inspire them to never give up. So I think that's an amazing story. And I commend you for that, for battling such a tough you know period of your life. So we're very lucky to have you, Ryan. And uh we look forward to making, you know, great content for the fans to enjoy. So my first question I have for you today, just to let the audience get to know you a little bit more is, you know, who are your favorite teams? You know, obviously we are a sports podcast. So, I mean, it's not, you don't get the full sports podcast effect unless we know who you cheer for. So who you got? Uh, my, my favorite two teams are Louisville and Ohio State. Well, both sports. I like watching. I love Louisville basketball, I love Louisville football, and I also keep up and love Ohio State basketball and football. Um, I I was born in Louisville, so I I kind of grew into a Louisville, Louisville Cardinal family. So I uh, started keeping up with um, both football and basketball and other sports too. Like baseball is fun to keep up with. Um, and then my dad's from Toledo, Ohio, so I also grew up in an Ohio State football family and basketball, and I. I just kept up with both both teams since I was since I was young. Since you're an Ohio State fan, the number one question I want to lead with you for this pot for this episode is: there's a lot of rumors going around that Ohio State had one of the one of, if not the best off seasons in college football. What are your thoughts on that? I truly believe that they did have one of the best off seasons, maybe the best. You know, you you hear the the phrase quality over quantity we we only got ohio state only got six transfers and you see other teams like louisville louisville got 26 and ole miss got 17 those are a lot of players that went to the team and maybe those teams had a bunch of players leaving but ohio state they kept most of their players that were supposed to get drafted and you see these players coming in only six, but you have a guy like Caleb Downs. He had about 107 tackles and two interceptions at Alabama as a freshman. People say that he was kind of like a junior or senior, even though like he, he played like that. And Will, Will Howard, you know, he, he may have struggled a little bit at Kansas State with like a, a five-star QB, Avery Johnson coming in. But he, he can throw and he can run. I, I think he'll have the, like, experience. Or he has the experience, and I think that'll help Ohio State. And you also have a guy like Julian Sand coming in. He committed to Bama, went there for about two weeks, I think. And now he transferred here because I think a big part of that was having Bill O'Brien as our offensive coordinator. You have Quinchon Judkins. Um, over 30 touchdowns and over 2,000 yards at two years at Ole Miss. Just love the guys coming in and excited for this season. You know, it's funny that you mentioned quality over quantity because I actually did a snippet earlier in the season on a uh, on the Spotify channel that talked about, you know, quality over quantity transfer uh, prospects and, you know, how I didn't really care for the grading system that, you know, on three, 24, seven, all of them do when they grade these transfer classes. So my next question though, because you know, I'm a Texas fan, you know, we've talked in, you know, I'm a Duke fan, you, every, the fans know that, but my question with the buzz that Ohio state's getting, 
what separates, you know, what they do, what they did in this offseason rather than what a team like Texas or a team like Colorado did? You know, both teams, you know, fixed major area of needs. So where do you think Ohio State really separated themselves from those other teams? You know, I think I think just the the talent and the skill that they got, they they really filled their needs. They they could possibly go after another offense tackle when the portal opens in or opens in the spring. But they really filled their needs. Like we or Ohio State lost their quarterback Kyle McCord like the first day that the transfer portal opened. And their defense kinda needed another player just to have there and you know they were good they were good at running back with Trevion Henderson but adding Quinchon is just like a whole nother level and so I, I really think that they filled their needs with the positions and Texas got some good players too they got some good players in recruiting and transfer they got Trey Moore who was maybe top five in sacks from UTSA I believe and they got guys like Colin Simmons coming in as a high school player, and they got Ryan Wingo, and so I think, I think both teams will be very very good next year. Having uh, Quinn Ewers coming back is huge. Oh, absolutely, and I think uh, what I was able to touch on from what you're saying though is that Ohio State, with them having so many players coming back. I think what that, you know, with the players they have coming in, that just adds to an already good team that they already have. So I was able to get that from you. And I'm going to transition a little bit to the next question I have to you. We talk about your other team, you know, Louisville, they had a, they had a first year head coach this year. Well, first year with them, I should clarify and, you know, did a lot of good things. So what were your overall thoughts of the first year of the Jeff Brom era? It honestly surprised me. It surprised me a lot. I thought, Maybe we would get bowl eligible this year, um, but we, I think we were, ten, I think Louisville was ten and one at one point with a loss at Pittsburgh, but Louisville beat Notre Dame at home, which hasn't happened in a couple of years. They they played well against anyone, and it it just looked a whole different team. Louisville was kind of at ground zero, or like at a bad point when the past couple of years when we just weren't winning games and fans were, weren't really getting excited to watch. So it was, I, I love the hire having Jeff Brom come here. I love the first season and can't wait for more. Where do you think that the Brom era is going to leave Louisville? Like, you know, we talk about, you know, what's the floor, what's the ceiling, you know, where do you see this Louisville team peaking under Jeff Brom? You know, I since the college football expansion, I think that if they do really well this season and they ha- kind of had a season like last year or this past year, I think they could end up sneaking into the twelve team playoff. You know, have, we were we were like top ten, number nine, and number ten this year, and that would have put us in the playoff. And I think that. You know, we got a lot of good transfers. We got, like, three defensive players from Tennessee. We got Penny Boone, Colin Lacey from Southern, uh, South Alabama. And I think that it could be a very, again, successful year. So you're saying Louisville could sneak into the college football playoff? I think that would be probably the peak or the ceiling. I think you heard it here first. You heard it here first from Ryan North. Louisville is going to the college football playoff next year. So to wrap up. To wrap up what we're saying about, you know, to wrap up what we're talking about with your two teams, um, Louisville, you say, could have a very good year next year as well. Ohio State is a lot of teams picked to, you know, potentially win the national championship. If you had to put that, like, the odds on Ohio State winning the national championship next year, what percentage or what, you know, favor of odds would you give them? You know, it's going to be very hard because of the – Comets realignment and the college football playoff because it, it's almost like college basketball with the tournament that some teams that aren't ranked as high like towards number one end up being some of the best you know, they show up when it matters so I think it'll be significant significantly harder but if 
if we just play play our best football each and every week, then I would give maybe like a seventy percent chance. You know, I, I've I've seen the low and I've seen the high, and I think that it could be a very successful year, or it we could be all right. Sounds like a plan, and I know this is going to be a very tough transition for you because as we go from two of your teams looking on the rise or, you know, looking really good for next year, you know, we're going to go to the basketball side and, you know, that's not maybe not looking as bright. So my first question from the basketball side of it, you know, you are being a Louisville fan. Where did the Kenny Payne era go wrong? And when do you think we're finally going to get the, the answer that we've all been looking for is when he gets fired? You know, I think it really went wrong when he couldn't sign a, a true point guard. We last year we had Ellis and it seemed like he did everything for us and that just wasn't enough. He was a good player. He averaged like over seventeen points a game. He he looked like he came to play every game and not many of the other players looked like that. And when you want to get in the tournament, having the good guards is like most important because the guard play in the tournament is probably the best you know obviously you need big men too but if you're having guards put up over like 18 points a game then you're going to win games in the tournament and there there were rumors about around the Kentucky game that he could have been fired and our uh a our ad josh hurd was i heard rumors about him maybe potentially firing but i think the end result will be at the end of the season and well, they'll give Louisville some of the off season to think about who they want as head coach, and obviously you don't want to wait too long. But hopefully, we find er, they find their guy. Now, speaking of finding their guy, you know, I'm going to ask you a, a couple different options here. Who would you want to be the Louisville basketball head coach? And you can give me a realistic possibility. And you can give me one where you're just kind of shooting from the stars. You know, we have fun here at Less Is More Sports. So, you know, just shoot for the stars and just give me a realistic one. See where it goes. You know, Louisville basketball is, it, it is really hit rock bottom. You know, I, I started probably being a fan around 2012, 2013, and we were really good at that point. We, or, they were really good at that point. They were, ranked mostly every year and a lot throughout the season and now it's just it's totally different fans aren't coming to the games the record is very bad Kenny Payne's record is he he's won 10 games in in two years so far and that's that's just not what we or what they need you know Louisville fans love Kenny Payne and they loved having him when he played for Louisville, but pot potentially as a head coach next year, some of the realistic ones, I think maybe Dusty May from FAU, you know, he led FAU to a final four last year and this year he's, they're still good. And maybe someone like Chris Beard, you know, I, I know you know Chris Beard pretty well as you like Texas basketball, but he, he did well at Texas Texas Tech also and Texas. And for the shoot for the stars, these are just, you know, Louisville fans would be in heaven if they got these guys. Um, Jay Wright out of retirement. He was so good at Villanova. They were always good. You know, won a couple national championships. And also, this would be a long shot for Louisville fans, but Rick Bettino coming back. I mean, we would all be so happy if he came back, but I think it would, it, it just probably won't happen. But we all, I love those answers. I love those answers, by the way. And, you know, firsthand experience, Chris Beard is a phenomenal coach when he's not choking out his wife. Um, and with Jay Wright, you know, that was a really shockwave that was went across college basketball when he retired because, you know, he was looking like he was in the prime of his career and there was a lot of speculations on, you know, maybe was it NIL? Was it the state of college basketball? What was it? But yeah, he would Louisville would be significantly better with that hire. And of course, I think that's a very popular 
theory that Louisville fans want Rick Pitino to come back. You know, bring Rick back to Louisville, bring back their big Rick energy. I think it would be a great, it'd be a great time. I love you. I love your answers. And I think as we transition to the next several questions, I want to kind of say that the first six were more about getting to know you. And of course, these next several, they're going to be more about the trend on the show. And, you know, our, you know, what we are here at Less Is More Sports, we are the college offseason podcast. And one of the bigger topics in the offseason, especially in recent years, is, you know, you got NIL, you have the transfer portal. And that being said, are you pro or anti NIL and transfer portal? I am definitely pro transfer portal and NIL. I think NIL, you know, college college athletes and even other students, they go into college and they, like during college, they may not have a lot of money. And, you know, they don't have much time because they have to keep up with schoolwork and they have to keep up with their sport. And I think NIL just gives whole different opportunities, you know, to make money. It also gives you an opportunity to get involved with the community. You know, I see all these Ohio State athletes that are um, getting involved with the community. They have this foundation, which is literally called the foundation. And that just has created so many opportunities this offseason. And for the transfer portal, I think that it really helps a lot. You know, it is crazy sometimes trying to keep up with it. But if a, if a player wants to start, day one, I think they can transfer to a different team and they can get their opportunity. And also um, kids that go to a smaller school that have very high upside, I think they can transfer to a bigger school and see how they do and end up being really good. So all three of the co-hosts here at the Less Is More Sports seem to be pro NIL and pro transfer portal, which is, you know, no boomers allowed, clearly. And, you know, one of the big concerns with a lot of old heads that talk in about college sports that they were worried about is that the NCAA wouldn't be able to afford, you know, paying players with the NIL money. But, you know, I saw a stat before I got on the show today that they profited $1.3 billion this past fiscal year. And as far as the transfer portal goes, one of their biggest concerns about that is that it's going to be something that just benefits the big schools. So, Given that statement of the transfer portal only benefiting the big school, what are your thoughts on that? You know, do you agree or disagree with that statement? Um, obviously, different uh, schools have different value or amount of money, and I I think that it could affect the big big schools a bunch just because they're they're in the like million dollars category, and you know they could use it to their advantage. You know, Ohio State this this off season has changed changed the way they do. You know, we we've used a lot of money to bring back players and bring in players. And I think that it probably does affect the big schools a bunch. And the smaller schools I think are, are still getting money and they could use it to their upside too. I would say I'm looking at several small schools. I'm looking at UMass. I'm looking at Tulane. And they're bringing in, you know, some of the highest ranked recruits they've had in program history. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, do you think that the transfer portal is allowing players, you know, to transfer to these big schools? And because these so these big schools load up with such good players that it's causing, you know, them to transfer to these smaller schools and maybe create balance within college football? Yes. Uh, there, there's very good players that are on the elite teams going to smaller schools. Example, TJ Finley, who is at Auburn, who's now at Texas State. They had a, he had a pretty, he had a really good year at Texas State. And their, their team is really good. And their, their coach is really good, by the way. And there's, there's players on every team that are very good. And they're transferring to smaller schools and they're, they're doing really well. They could go the draft. And I think that the effect, there's so many effects of the transfer portal that are very good. And I think that it helps the players out so much. And as we're talking about team building aspect, you know, because that is kind of the basis of the show as well. Do you think it's easier or harder in today's game with everything in consideration with NIL, with transfer portal? Is it easier or harder to build teams? 
to be honest, I think it is harder because you you have your team going into the off season, and once the transfer portal starts heating up, you you have to bring you have to bring your own players back that were already on your team, and that's that just makes it so much harder. It's so hard for a coach now nowadays, and I think some of the older coaches are retiring just it just because it may get a little too crazy. I'm not sure um, behind. I'm not sure why Nick Saban retired. If that was the reason, I'm not fully sure. But I I think it is. It I think it's significantly harder to be in this this day and age with the transfer portal and in in nil. It, there's still good opportunities, and the transfer portal and nil do really well for athletes. But I think it is a little bit harder. I think you made some really good points. And, of course, with Nick Saban, too. I mean, I don't know if you heard the comments by Jalen Milrow, but, you know, he is 28 years away from being 100 years old. So I think there is a, going to be a lot of speculation because of a new era that we are in in college sports. But we also have to remember, these guys are old, too. I mean, mm -hmm. Coach K was coaching for 42 years at Duke. You know, Roy Williams was pretty old, was not a young guy by any stretch, and neither was Jim Boeheim. So it definitely – We'll never fully know why they retired. Only they are going to know that. And, of course, we're just fans here at Less Is More Sports at the end of the day. So, but, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of factors. But, I mean, of course, they are old, too. So, I mean, that's definitely worth consideration as well. Um, And speaking of, you know, the old heads kind of going out of – coming out of the game, let's kind of play a game here where – let's pretend you're a college coach. Basketball, mm -hmm. football, whatever you prefer. Uh, Would you – Focus well with your primary focus. Would it be more on recruiting high school players or hitting the transfer portal to build your team? I think with this day and age, I would focus more on the transfer portal because you know, to win games, a lot a lot of teams are going to the transfer portal and they're changing their whole team with basketball and football. Getting the more experienced guys are make make your team better and. Like for high school athletes, you gotta you gotta kind of wait and develop them. And it takes time, you know. Teams go that route, and they're they end up being good. But if you want to be good, right now you go in the transfer portal, and you you get the guys that are elites. And yeah, I to be honest, I would go with the transfer portal. But I love getting high school athletes that are ranked really high, and are gonna do well in their future. So say you're a basketball coach and you have the opportunity to land like a Cooper flag or, you know, a Cameron Boozer or an Ace Bailey. You're not going to turn them down, right? Nope, not at all. No, you'd be crazy to turn Cooper flag down. As you all know, here at Less is More really Sports, good. my Facebook page has definitely become this Cooper flag fan page. And, you know, of course, I can't wait to see him at Duke University. You know, the team that's going to win tonight in the Tobacco Road rivalry, you know, just check the last 100 games. You know, we've won the we've won four more and are we've scored 45 more points than we're, more than the, that team eight miles down the road. So definitely had to get that shout out in here. And my last question for you, as we're talking about these coaches, you know, there's been a lot of movement over the last fiscal year. And as we're talking about the team building aspect, who in your opinion has been the best hire in college sports, basketball, football, who is really showing showcasing to you that best ability to build a team and compete for years to come so i have two it was pretty hard to pick one because there was a bunch of good coaches so my number one would be jamie chadwell who is at liberty this year in football they're both both football coaches that i chose jamie chadwell that was at there that is at liberty he led them to a undefeated season and they won the conference usa championship and he led them to a Fiesta Bowl, a New Year's Six Bowl for Liberty. And they, they played a, a team like Oregon. Oregon's really good. But I think he had a super successful year. And I think they could be ranked most years in, in the future. They were ranked, I think, maybe all of this year. And my second coach would be Jeff Brom. I know, I know I'm a Louisville fan, but... I think Jeff Brom had a really good year. He, he really changed the the kind of culture at Louisville. You know, we brought back an alum. And one of my favorite things that he's ever said was the 
person interviewing him was saying like oh you took that hit like just six days ago how are you able to play this game he said he said something about like do i have a pulse he said let's play football and Love it. so I, I think he really brought that mentality this year and i i think that it was such a very successful season i can't wait for next years to come Man, well, that wraps up every question I had for you today. So officially, wel Ryan, welcome to the show. We look forward to bringing you, you know, for, look forward. Wow, just had a complete word moment there. Uh, we look forward to having you on the show, bringing, of course, our fan base, the best storylines and the best hypotheticals and everything going on with the offseason of college sports. We're really lucky to have you. And, you know, you passed the bean test. I got to give it to you because not one time did Bean get upset at anything you said. So that is impressive because Matt has yet to make it through an episode without Bean getting upset. So Bean already likes you better than Matt. I'm looking at him right now. He's just giving me the side eye. But, uh, yeah, we're lucky to have you, man. And uh, as always, you know, like and subscribe to Less Is More Sports YouTube and Spotify channel. Uh, be sure to like our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and threads. That's at Less Is More Sports. And until next time, me and Ryan are officially out. So goodbye, everybody. See ya. Yeah.